Welcome back to the Freedom and Company Garage. Today is going to be a suspension day. Alrighty guys, so today we're going to be working on our rear swing arm and getting this thing all figured out with what we want to be doing here. So we've got a couple things. First things first, with how bad our other bike was wrecked, we did buy another swing arm assembly from a known good bike just to make sure that this one is not tweaked in any way. We'd rather be safe than sorry with something like this. So we're going to end up swapping these guys out for the newer slash better one here. Um, and then the next problem we have to tackle is how our axle is going to be mounting through here. So because we're going to be using these 12 inch Grom wheels, they obviously are going to have different hubs, different bearings, and a different axle size than the FC07 was designed for. So this, uh, these cutouts here in the stock FC07 swing arm are huge, and that's way bigger than the stock Grom axle. So what we've done so far is we have gone online and we've bought a few hardened steel shafts. Um, so these we're gonna be mocking up as our axles and if everything works out, we're gonna go ahead and thread one end and weld another, or weld a head on one end. That way we can use that as our axle and cinch everything down. So we'll cut it to length, do all that stuff to it. And if that works, then we'll just run with that. So in order to get that to fit in here, our plan is to take our stock drum swing arm and so they have these straight sections here and it actually works out really well. So if we cut this off right before it starts to bend in right in this area here. So we'll cut this off and we'll take the square rectangular section here and it actually fits almost perfectly inside this area here. So what we're thinking is we'll, we'll be able to use the stock locator and the adjustment tabs and the alignment tabs off of the stock Grom swing arm and then we will weld that and plug weld it into the FC07 swing arm here and that will be how everything is mounted. So this is already set up for a 12 millimeter axle which is what our shafts are which is what the stock Grom wheel uses and then that will also let us have a little bit more of a stretch on this bike. So with this swing arm right now, we're only sitting about one, maybe two inches of stretch over a stock grom. Um, so we measured the wheel bases of both and that's where we're sitting there. So we might have it stick out just a little bit longer, um, maybe another three inches or so, just to get a little bit more stretch and that should help us keep the front wheel on the ground when we're trying to take off with this bike and launch just because it's going to have so much more torque. Uh, we're really thinking that keeping the front end down will be a challenge. So hopefully all of that will help out. And uh, yeah, we're going to get started on this. So you guys saw us cut apart the stock Grom swing arm and we now have those little legs inserted into our FC07 swing arm and everything is looking really good. So this idea um, I think so far is going to be our best bet. So we took our axle shaft 
what we're gonna be using for that. So this is a precision ground 12 millimeter shaft. So it's a hardened, hardened steel rod and that fit perfectly inside all of the bearings on the ground wheel and all the spacers. We have it spaced out pretty well. Um, well, for what it is right now, we still have to play with the spacing back and forth just to get it in line with our output sprocket over here. Um, but this is going to give you guys an idea of what we're looking at. So we measured the stock grom and we measured this one and this is exactly a six inch stretch over a stock grom. So the rear is six inches further back than it normally would be. So normally it would be sitting a little bit more underneath the tail here. But I think this is exactly what we were looking for. Um, so now I'm gonna have Paul jump on the bike and you guys can see kind of what the suspension is looking like. We still are gonna have to get some stiffer springs in the front here because these, so we're adding weight to the bike and we're gonna have us riding. So when we ever do come down from a wheelie or just bumps in the road, we're actually sitting pretty close from bottoming out these forks. So we have to get some stiffer springs in those guys for sure. Uh, we already knew that going into it, but you can see how the suspension works. Um, you can see just for scale, it's still a tiny Grom looking bike for sure. And you can see our ground clearance. If Paul bounces a little bit, we're still coming. I mean, we still have at least four inches of ground clearance and that's not a problem there. You can see the front is getting a little close. Like we said, stiffer shocks there, but the rear is just the stock FC07 spring and dampener. And that actually is working really well. So we have it on the lowest preload setting and I think we're just gonna stick with that. Um, if we do find something later that we want something changed, we can just get an adjustable spring for the stock FC07 swing arm. And that's what we will do um, again if we want something to change. But right now we're just gonna run with this. And, and the whole thing with this is we just wanna get it running and riding as soon as possible. Um, our plan for, for this is get it going and then this will be a continual kind of project. Like we'll always be upgrading it. We'll always be doing work on it and making things a little bit nicer. Um, just doing upgrades as we go. So, so when we finish this first part, that won't be our final rendition of everything. This will just be a continuation of, uh, of the Grominator as we go. So for our next steps, so these were just mocked up in here. So you can see that this angle is a little off. So we're going to get these uh, inserted at exactly the same amount on either side. We're going to straighten them out and then we're going to try to move them as far down as possible. And then we are going to plug weld this whole thing in here and basically just weld this piece solid to this piece. And then we're going to work on making some transition pieces to blend this swing arm into this insert here to make it look like it was all one piece and that we had never even inserted anything. Um, so we want this to look stock-ish, I guess. And that's kind of what we're going to run with. So we're going to take all this stuff back apart now completely, throw it on the bench and start welding again.
So our swing arm is all welded up now. So you guys saw me weld all that out and this turned out pretty nice here. And so you can see this is where the stock axle would go through on the FZ07 swing arm. And then this is where the axle goes through on the Grom swing arm. And so we basically did like a plug style weld here and then welded the perimeter around the outside edge here. And that was all the way around. That's the inside over here. And then now we have to deal with this gap up here that makes up the difference for the heights between the two swing arms. So to do that, we're gonna take some square tubing here. We've already marked out what we wanna do. And so we're gonna take basically a wedge out of it. And these two are exactly the same width. So those should weld in and blend nicely down. And then we'll be left with a nice kind of gusset wedge all the way to the end here and make it all blend down and make it look like it was all one piece before. So we're gonna get working on that and we'll show you guys when we're done. Our swing arm gussets are now done. So you guys saw us cut these guys and tack them on. So I like that general shape. It looks pretty good. It kind of ties this piece in with this piece. Um, so we ended up doing a larger one that goes all the way to the end on the top and then a smaller one that kind of ends right at where the axle will be at the bottom. So not only does that kind of blend everything into one but that will help add a little bit of structural integrity to this part back here just because it is a little bit longer um so yeah we're pretty happy with how these turned out there's the other side there so now we're going to go ahead and weld those up and then depending on how they look we might blend them down to make it look like it was all one piece or we might just leave the welds if they look decent enough so here we go and now we are all welded out. So these things turned out pretty nice. We're, we're liking the shape. We like how um, kind of the look of everything. So we welded everything out and then went ahead and just did a light grind over them all just to smooth some of this stuff out. Um, this, this material welds way dirtier than like the FC07 material. Um, so it was a little bit of a challenge trying to get a decent weld on there. Um, and we didn't want to remove too much material, so we just did a light pass just to kind of knock some of that stuff down, smooth it out, make it look a little bit uh, more blended in. Um, but all of that should get kind of covered and filled when we sandblast and powder coat everything. So I'm not too worried about that. If it's still an issue, then I'll uh, kind of go over it a little bit more. But right now we just wanted to get everything kind of buttoned up and we want to get this back on the bike. That way we can really see how it's going to look. All right, y'all, so we have everything bolted up here. We took it around. It actually rolls really well. One thing we still have to do is put the bearings in the neck here. We are just waiting to do that until we get the remainder of our frame welded up. So like we were saying in our last frame video, we have, it's pretty much 90, 95, 99%, but we have one gusset plate to add right in here to tie this stuff together. We're just waiting on a couple tools to get that done. Um, so that means we'll have a little bit more welding to do on the neck and we don't wanna do that with the bearings in it quite yet. Um, so that's the last thing we have to do on here. And then our suspension will be done. We still have to have our shocks in our forks um, retuned. So we're gonna go a much stiffer spring with some valve shocks, something in there to kind of tune it for the weight of the bike. And then our rear, we're gonna leave exactly how it is. Surprisingly, this stock FC07 shock handles really well. Um, 
so far with just how it is. If we want to later, we can always throw like an O-lens or something like that in that rear if we want the adjustability. But for now, we're gonna try this one out and see how it goes. So I think this is where we're gonna end this video, guys. We made a lot of good progress on our rear swing arm. That is almost completely done. So the only thing we have left to do there is thread our axle to accept a nut on one end, then we'll weld a head on the other, and then our axle shaft will be done. And then in the next episode, we are going to be starting on our fuel cell system. So there's a lot to that one. Um, we have to start putting our fairings on to make sure how much room we have for a tank here, and then possibly what we're gonna do for our split system with another fuel cell here that's tied together with a, uh, a fuel pump in the center. So that's all coming in the next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe, like this video, and share wherever you can. It really means a lot. Thanks, guys.